looking at surrealist art might provoke more questions than answers. Surrealism is a movement that technically began in the early 1920s and still very much continues today. It is a movement that was founded largely in uh, questions of uh, psychoanalysis and um, the imagination and childlike dream states born of its founder, André Breton's, interest in a book called The Interpretation of Dreams by the well-known psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. At the Hyde Collection in Glens Falls, New York, visitors may view 42 pieces in the show titled A Long Affair, Surrealism, 1924 to Now. The exhibit celebrates 100 years of the Surrealist movement, as French writer André Breton had established it in his 1924 work, Surrealist Manifesto. Exhibit curator Dorin Tanyol says the show contains examples of early Surrealist art, and more contemporary pieces. The show features artists that were directly affiliated with the movement when it took hold in Paris in the 1920s, but it also features contemporary artists working today, well-known names like Wangechi Mutu and George Kondo, who are, even though their careers began long after the death of Surrealism's founder, they're still using techniques that were key components of Surrealist activities in the 1920s. The exhibit includes two pieces by celebrated surrealist Salvador Dali from Spain. You'll also see a work by the famous Belgian painter René Magritte. Artists represented in the gallery also come from France, Germany, Switzerland, and the United States. This is Kay Sage's Margin of Silence, an oil painting from 1942. Kay Sage was an American painter born nearby in Albany. She's depicting a very unclear situation, a faceless, hooded, cloaked figure leaning against a plant-like form on top of a cave. The meticulous details of the work have all the optical trappings of reality, yet we're unable to determine what is actually happening in the picture. And this is one of the hallmarks of one style of surrealism, which we might call the realistic unreal. We're confronted with an undiscernible narrative, um, despite the hyper-realistic detail. A lot of people's reactions to surrealist painting is one of incomprehension or disorientation, a complete lack of understanding of what narrative is being told. And this was the point. The surrealists were working very much with questions of dream psychology. And so part of the experience of looking at a surrealist work is not understanding. And that's okay, that's where you're supposed to be. This is André Masson's In the Forest, an oil and sand painting from 1942. André Masson was a French painter very much at the forefront of the movement, although he migrated to the United States in the 1940s. In his In the Forest, we see a prime example of the technique known as automatism, where artists created work without any preconceived notion as to what they were going to produce. It was considered an unconscious act. And so in the case of the Masson, we have a series of abstract scrawls and splatters where he actually threw paint and threw sand at the canvas, and wherever it landed is where it stayed. Masson told us that as he was working, he wasn't conscious of what he was doing, and that after the work was completed, there were signs that could be interpreted. And so you can see in the painting that there are stylized eyes and trees, which, at least Masson tells us, he didn't intend to paint. They emerged unconsciously as he worked. 
we at the Hyde have such a wonderful collection of surrealist work, about a quarter of the work in the show is from our permanent collection. And I knew that collaboration with generous lenders like the Museum of Modern Art in New York or the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston would work to bring a larger scale exhibition to our visitors. And surrealism is always a blockbuster show no matter where you hold it. You may see the exhibit, A Long Affair, Surrealism 1924 to Now, until September 15th at the Hyde Collection in Glens Falls, New York. Learn more about the exhibit at hydecollection.org. Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.